With both the Xbox Live games with gold titles and the PlayStation Plus titles for the month of February being revealed, it is time to compare both months' free game offerings, I should say quote-unquote free game offerings, you guys know how this works, and the month of February is rather interesting and let me explain why. When doing these videos, I've said often that Microsoft really has the edge in terms of direct comparison when you talk about it, given the fact that they're offering Xbox One titles and Xbox 360 titles, two on each, and the Xbox 360 titles are obviously playable on the Xbox One through backwards compatibility, so they had that inherent advantage, especially after Sony and uh, PlayStation stopped offering PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita games, and a lot of those titles would be cross-buy. You usually would only get two PS4 games every month. However, in the month of February, you get a bonus game that is a PlayStation VR title, and that definitely does add some value, making it a much more interesting comparison point. Whatever the case may be, let's talk about both months' offerings right now and let's start off with the PlayStation Plus freebies for the month of February. So this is one of the best PlayStation Plus months in a very long time. The freebies are excellent, especially coming off the lackluster January with Uncharted, uh, the Nathan Drake Collection, and Goat Simulator. This was something that I think was much needed and built some goodwill with Sony and their fans. I think that goodwill is always going to be there, but nonetheless, we have Bioshock the Collection kicking things off and this is definitely the highlight game of the month. This is a phenomenal offering better than Uncharted the Nathan Drake collection because I think Bioshock is one of those franchises that yeah a lot of people have heard of however I think a lot more people have not played all three Bioshock games than they played the Uncharted games I think Uncharted is just so synonymous with uh, PlayStation that if you have a PlayStation 4 you probably picked up Uncharted Nathan Drake collection especially given the fact that they've offered it so cheap Bioshock the collection even on sale goes for 15 to 20 dollars and here you're getting it as a freebie with PlayStation Plus this includes Bioshock Bioshock 1, 2, and Infinite. So you are getting three quality titles, and Bioshock 1 is a phenomenal game. Bioshock Infinite is also a fantastic first-person shooter. I would put them about at the same quality level. Bioshock 2 is usually the one that people say is at a lower level. However, Bioshock 2 still has an 88 at, on Metacritic. That just goes to show how exceptional of games Bioshock 1 and Infinite are. Bioshock 1 has like a 96, and Bioshock Infinite has a 94. From a personal standpoint, in my opinion, Bioshock Infinite is the best game in the franchise. I love the look of the game. I love the setting change. I think it's just such a great first-person shooter. Phenomenal gameplay. That's really one of the standouts of Bioshock. From a first-person shooting gameplay standpoint, it is one of the best that you're going to see. Obviously, you don't get the multiplayer component of Bioshock 2. That is not included in the collection, but you're primarily going into these games for the single-player campaign, and those elements are done really, really well. That's always been the standout of Bioshock. And with Bioshock the collection, you can check out the game. As a PlayStation Plus subscriber, now is a better time than ever to check the franchise out, and with rumblings of a new Bioshock games being in the works, hey, this is pretty good timing to get people back reinvested into Bioshock as a franchise, although if they announce a new Bioshock game, everybody's going to be stoked for it anyway, so nonetheless, great offering here. Next up, we have a great complimentary title to Bioshock the Collection, and that is The Sims 4. Now, The Sims is one of the most iconic franchises in all of gaming, however, The Sims is more so associated with PC games. So, it is a little bit different on the PlayStation 4. It didn't make the smoothest, uh, smoothest transition to the PS4, and some of the reception was not that strong. The game has a 70 on Metacritic, but if you look at the user score, a dicey 4.1, not the best score in the world. However, to get it as a freebie with PlayStation Plus, I think it makes it a lot more palatable, and I'm sure it's gone through some updates and it's gotten better. Uh, this is just the base game. You have to keep in mind of that. There's a lot of downloadable content for The Sims 4 that really does extend the experience. But still, as a freebie with PlayStation Plus, I don't think Sims 4 was the kind of game that a lot of people were itching to drop, you know, $15, $20 on, but as a freebie with PS Plus, yeah, it's a game that you might kill some time with, and I think it acts as a great complimentary title to Bioshock Infinite. Had The Sims 4 just been a standalone game, and it was the top-tier game for Plus, and then you offered something else smaller as a complimentary title, I think people would be upset about that, but because Bioshock Infinite and Bioshock The Collection, I should say, as a whole, is a phenomenal freebie, and then Sims 4 kind of takes that secondary role where it's that additional experience, it's something completely different, I feel like they really got it right with offering two diverse experiences here as the top tier games of PlayStation Plus. However, as I mentioned, we have a bonus PlayStation VR game and it's a phenomenal one in Firewall Zero Hour. Firewall Zero Hour is arguably the best game on PSVR. I personally probably wouldn't go that far, but it's definitely among the top three to five. 
And if you don't know what it is, it's a multiplayer tactics based shooter exclusively for VR and a lot of people will say it's Rainbow Six Siege but in VR and yeah with all the tactics based elements I can see where you're coming from with that one. This is one that First Contact Entertainment has done a phenomenal job in keeping updated, keeping the game fresh, adding new content. They've just killed it in that regard and given that Firewall Zero Hour is a multiplayer game, accentuated if you have a couple of friends to play with, obviously that means you need to have some friends with VR as well and I'll go back to the statistic of 100 million PlayStation 4 is being out there, but only 5 million VR units have been sold. Not a lot of people have PlayStation VR in comparison to those that own the PlayStation 4 console itself, but if you do have the VR headset and you don't have firewalls, you are, which that's pretty dicey as well, given that if you have the VR headset, you probably already picked this game up. Hey, it's a great benefit, and then if you don't have VR at all, you get this game now, and maybe down the line, you're gonna pick up the VR headset, and then you're already gonna have this game ready to go. Let's just hope that the player base does sustain over the years it's still very active now and uh, with the PlayStation Plus offering I imagine that it is gonna see a relative jolt as well so very nice to see this one as well and given the fact that again they removed PlayStation Vita games they removed the PlayStation 3 games and while those directly weren't playable on PlayStation 4 a lot of those games were crossed by I go to games like Econo Class which was a phenomenal game promoted as a Vita title but crossed by with PS4 that was just additional games you were getting not anymore but offering bonus titles like Firewall Zero Hour definitely lightens that blow a little bit and when you already have two top tier games like Bioshock the collection and The Sims 4 as a complimentary experience hey that is a killer lineup for the month of February thumbs up for PlayStation Plus next up we've got four games with Xbox Live games with gold and I'll be honest right off the bat kind of an eh month we've got TT Isle of Man this is gonna be a game that I don't think is gonna be up everyone's alley it's got a 68 on Metacritic for bikers there are only two types of speed races the Isle of Man TT and the rest no other races as grueling for the motorbikes and demanding for the riders. Assume the challenge of the Snaefell Mountain course, all 37.73 miles, faithfully reproduced with the champions and their bikes. Now, this game is a little bit of a relatively recent release, March of 2018, so not that recent, but hey, two years ago, and it still does have an MSRP of $59.99. Obviously, nobody is paying that. This is going to be a game, I feel like, if you're into these uh, motorbike racing games, you would already have picked it up. Was received rather well by the community, 7.7 .7 on the user score at Metacritic. But again, I do feel like this is going to be one that has a finite level of interest from fans. So a decent offering here, but not one that I think is a highlighting experience. But nonetheless, that is the first offering of Xbox Live Games with Gold. Next up, we have Call of Cthulhu, an even more recent release. This came out back in October of 2018. And it did have a relatively mixed reception, a 66 on Metacritic, a 6.0 user score. I thought Call of Cthulhu had a lot of interesting elements. It has a great atmosphere that is done really, really well. It's a, more of a psychological horror game that does falter in certain areas. It's set in 1924, private investigator Pierce is sent to look into the tragic death of the Hawkins family, plunge into a world of creeping madness and cosmic horror, cryptic clues, shadowy figures, and pure terror bar your way as you fight to retain your sanity and solve an otherworldly mystery. Uh, typically goes for $39.99 at this point, so a freebie is very much appreciated. Obviously, if you do find it on sale, you can get it a little bit cheaper, but Call of Cthulhu is an interesting game, and I feel like this is the kind of game that not a lot of people would buy had it be full price, but as a Xbox Live Games with Gold freebie, it is an interesting enough game where I think people will spend the time in checking it out, and it does have a lot of interesting elements. While not perfect, if you're into that psychological horror element, Call of Cthulhu is definitely going to offer that in spades, and I would say that's a pretty good offering. Next up, we have the original Xbox offerings and the Xbox 360 offerings that are playable on the Xbox One through backwards compatibility. First up, we have Fable Heroes. Now, this is a Fable game. However, it's not the Fable game that you really, really want. Fable Hero is an action-packed hack-and-slash adventure beat-em-up built for Xbox Live Arcade. It delivers a pretty different spin on the Fable franchise with a unique art style and gameplay that takes playful competition to the next level with four-player multiplayer time trials and leaderboards on Xbox Live, whether on the couch or using Xbox Live co-op players work together to defeat enemies while also competing with one another to collect gold coins and level up. It's got a 55 on Metacritic, 4.7 user score. I don't want you guys to see Fable and think like, oh my god, it's another Fable game. No, it's very much not of the essence of a regular Fable game. So that one, eh, not for me. $9.99 typical price, but now it will be available as a freebie. Hey, it is a cooperative focus game and as a freebie, you guys can check it out that way, but not a great option offering in my opinion and lastly I would say that this is a pretty good offering 
An original Xbox title and a pretty iconic one at that, we have Star Wars Battlefront 1. Now, I know the reception for Star Wars Battlefront has not been that strong since EA has taken the helm, although Battlefront 2 has made some major, major progress, and it's a rather good game at this point. A lot of outlets are re-reviewing uh, re the game. Star Wars Battlefront 1 is a very good game. I wouldn't say it's as good as Battlefront 2. And if you go back and play the game, it is going to show its age a little bit. However, I think Battlefront 1 is really going to excel from a nostalgia standpoint. I think if you're going back and playing Battlefront 1 for the first time, I think you are going to notice some of the dated elements. However, if you're going back with the nostalgia in mind, and if you are a Star Wars fan... I think there is going to be reason to check the game out on that end. However, if the nostalgia isn't in effect, I don't know how many people are going to enjoy the game. It's still a quality made shooter. It got an 80 on Metacritic back in the day on the original Xbox 83 on PS2. Uh, so it was received rather well and the game performed rather well. Of course, it spawned Battlefront 2, which I would say was the better game. But nonetheless, Battlefront 1 with this, there's still reason to check it out, of, of, especially if you are, are a fan of the IP. There's a lot of fun to be had. I just don't know what the longevity is going to be for somebody that's going back in time to 2004 and playing it for the first time when Battlefront 2 is out there and it is a quality game at this point. And I know a lot of people hate me saying that, but maybe a lot of you guys haven't played Battlefront 2 since it went through its massive, massive update. So that's going to wrap up this video. So we have to make the decision which month had the better offering. And I think this month is a pretty clear cut winner. You gotta give the leg up to Sony and the PlayStation 4. They've just got a killer month. Bioshock the Collection is a phenomenal offering. Firewall Zero Hour for those that own VR is great. And it's even one you can add it to your library and maybe down the line you'll pick up a VR headset and you'll be good to go then. And The Sims 4 is a pretty decent offering as a complimentary title. Again, if Sims 4 was the main game, it wouldn't be that great. But as a complimentary title, it's really good. Xbox Live Games with Gold isn't terrible. However, TT Isle of Man, I don't think that's the kind of game that's gonna excite a lot of people. Call of Cthulhu. Cthulhu is a pretty decent little game uh, with its issues, but I don't know if people are going to be super excited for that as well. Fable Heroes, that's pretty much a wash. And then Star Wars Battlefront is good if you have nostalgia attached to it, but I don't think the lineup on Games with Gold does match the excellent lineup with the PlayStation Plus freebies for the month of February 2020. That's going to conclude this video. Definitely let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? I'm all ears. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.